Hello there, my mobile gaming friends. My name is Nimblethaw, and today we're gonna explore the four best mobile games that I played last week. I'll spend about a minute talking about the pros and the cons of each game, and if you wanna download any of these games or watch the full videos that I've done on them, you can find all of those links in the description box below this video. So, what sort of games will we be taking for a spin today? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. You did ask that question, right? Because today's lineup is a great one. We've got everything from an arcade space shooter game with Tetris-like bullet hell gameplay to a top-down Battlelands Royale competitor, an idle shooter RPG based on the Zombielands movies, and lastly, an arch hero alternative with Permadev. So let's waste no more time. Here's today's first game. Suba is a fun top-down battle royale game, think a bit like Battleland Royale, with a bunch of different heroes to play as, each of which uses the weapons we find throughout the map in slightly different ways, and this adds a lot of replayability to the game, because you most likely want to try out every single hero to see how they use the weapons and which then fits best to your playstyle. Now to make this an even better deal, we seem to be playing against actual other players in this game's 20-player matches, as opposed to bots, the controls are responsive, and the matches are perfectly bite-sized, coming in at two to four minutes per match. Each hero and the equipment pieces that we can equip on that hero grow stronger the more we level it up, which yes, does require getting more of the same hero or equipment piece through loot boxes that are gained through gameplay, or they can of course also be bought through in-air purchases. Now this does make the game page progress faster, but everything can still be grinded as a free player and I haven't really run into any overpowered players, not yet at least. The game is offline playable, it takes up 316 megabytes of space, it's out on Android and on iOS, and if you're looking for for a Battleland Royale alternative, this is a fun little one that is insanely popular these days, so you should definitely take it for a spin. Now this next game is one for all the Zombieland and the Clone Evolution fans out there, because Zombieland Double Tapper is an idle RPG shooter game that has us defeat endless stages of zombies across the US with a squad of heroes from the Zombieland movie. The Zombieland Double Tapper movie, so the second one. The game features quite a bit of content and is very reminiscent of Clone Evolution in style and in overall gameplay. Play. Although this is an idle game, it actually does a decent job at incentivizing active play as well through special zombies that can explode or freeze other zombies if we tap them manually, and through a relatively fast progression speed, which means there's constantly stuff to be upgraded or improved upon. Now as we move from city to city, all our hero levels and our equipment levels reset to zero, while of course permanent power-ups get to stay, which on one hand keeps the game fresh, but it also does make it slightly repetitive, having to level up all your heroes and all of your equipment all over again. The monetization system in this game does allow us to speed up progress, but there's never really any need to spend money on it as long as you enjoy the idle grind in this game. The game is offline playable, it takes up 173 megabytes of space, it's out on Android and on iOS, and if you're either a Zombieland fan or you've just been looking for a very long time for a clone evolution alternative, then Zombieland Double Tapper is absolutely worth taking for a spin as long as you don't mind a bit of idle grinding. Dungeon Break is a roguelike dungeon crawler shooter game where our character only shoots when we move using the game's joystick control. Now, this might sound familiar if you've played Arch Hero, because it's pretty much the exact same gameplay loop. Only Dungeon Break was actually released way before Arch Hero, and it is also slightly less polished, sadly. During each play, we get to switch weapons and upgrade them as we play, and between permadeaths, we can buy permanent upgrades using the game's single in-game currency, which is earned through gameplay or through in-app purchases. The game is offline playable, it takes up 135 megabytes of space, it's available on both Android and on iOS, and in conclusion, the game is fun and it's without any forced advertisements whatsoever, and that's really appreciated, but it does crash every now and again, just completely closed down and I have to restart the game, and it also has slightly bugged text here and there. So overall, this is not as high quality of an experience as Arch Hero, but it's a worthy alternative to consider playing if you're looking for one. And now for today's last game, because when it comes to really unique games on mobile, indie developers always seem to lead the way with their frankly wacky and oftentimes just really weird ideas, and today's next game, Utilizer Deluxe, fits that bill exactly. It's essentially an arcade space shooter that mixes the shoot 'em up bullet hell genre with, well, a Tetris-like match-free system, I guess. This is indie gaming when it's best, you really can't compare this game to anything else out there on mobile or on PC or any platform, really. So as 
we play through this game's many levels, our spaceship shoots automatically and our goal is to shoot incoming enemies while moving quickly to pick up blocks of similar colors until three of those blocks match, which will then reward us with some points. And that's the goal of this game, getting as many points in each level as possible. Although this game is less hardcore than a typical bullet hell game, I love the hectic multitasking gameplay of having to shoot while we stack blocks and the many permanent upgrades helps keep the game interesting as you play through the many, many levels in the game. The monetization strategy is to show us a few occasional video advertisements and they can be removed through a single $2 in-app purchase, by the way. And then there's more in-app purchases to immediately get more in-game gold, which will allow us to upgrade our permanent upgrades quite a bit faster. The game is offline playable. It takes up only 50 megabyte of space, so it's a really tiny game. It's available on both Android and on iOS, and it's an easy recommendation from my end since its unique gameplay had me hooked for a good few hours. And while it's not a game that you'll play for months on end, it's a great little and challenging time waster, and it's my favorite game of the week as well. So with that said, thank you very much for watching, my fellow mobile gamers. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you're new around here, be sure to hit that notification bell to join the Nimble Nation. We are all here to find and discuss the best and latest mobile games, and there's always room for more mobile gaming enthusiasts in the community. So until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.